Tomorrow, I am leaving to go to TwitchCon. That's right. I know a lot of VTubers are going to be there virtually. I am going to be there also virtually. And I'm going to have my assistant bring me there physically in the digital space. So as you can see, I'm trapped behind a screen. But this screen is portable. So I'm having my lovely assistant bring me to TwitchCon. So I will be vlogging on this channel every day while I'm there. So um, I've never done like a travel vlog before or like those faceless type of vlogs. And I'm really excited because I've always wanted to do one. And I just, I don't know. <laughs> I always felt self-conscious about doing those because like no one wants to see this. But then I thought, wait a minute, I'm a VTuber going to a convention. Who doesn't want to see the experience of how VTubers like handle conventions? What I go through when I go to conventions because it's very different than IRL streamers. Um, there's a lot of like precautions that VTubers have to go through compared to IRL people. I'm not saying that IRL people don't have to go through similar things, but there's a bit more of a nuance for VTubers specifically. Um, something that I want to kind of talk about a little bit before we got into playing this game is I want to talk about con safety for VTubers. Now, some of this stuff can apply to live streamers as well, but it's really crucial for any VTuber who might be thinking of going to TwitchCon this week. You wish you have a safe and fun time at the convention. Yes, yes, that is what I kind of want to talk about too. So the reason why I want to vlog is because I've, I've gone to a lot of conventions. I've gone to TwitchCon many times. I've also gone to a lot of anime conventions, both when I used to be a cosplayer and now um, I get to go as a VTuber and I've been going to conventions as a VTuber, whether my assistant brings me there or I tune in on like a little robot and I go around the entire convention. There are things that as a VTuber, I've learned to navigate differently at conventions. So I want to talk about that because I'm sure there are some people who are, you know, scared or nervous to go to a convention this might be your first time going to a convention if you're a vtuber and i'd like to just kind of talk about some things that have helped me when i've gone to conventions how to keep myself safe what are like really good just con going etiquette as well as sharing um some experiences of things that could potentially go wrong so that way you don't make those mistakes because i know some of you will be going to twitchcon and i really care about your safety Unfortunately, this happens every year where TwitchCon will come or some other anime convention will come by and there's always these horror stories that happen and a lot of it stems down to people don't know how to be safe at conventions. Mm, you can understand, you understand con safety. Well, yeah, it, look, con safety is a real thing that I don't think a lot of streamers talk about. Um, you only ever hear about the horror stories from streamers, right? No one ever talks about like, oh, you know, what are some things you should be worried about going into this? What are like things that you might not be considering that you should and how to like actually keep yourself safe? Like first things first. <laughs> now, this might sound kind of obvious, but you would be surprised how many people don't do this when they go to a convention. But if you are a content creator and you are going to a convention and you want to take photos of either yourself or if you want to vlog anything like that like making content around your trip to a convention make sure you censor anything that might contain potentially sensitive information you would not believe things like i don't know license plates on cars credit cards when you go to purchase stuff even receipts Sometimes you got to censor any information that could potentially link back to who you are and potentially dox you. Again, that sounds really obvious, but you would be surprised how many like little things slip in the cracks when people are so caught up in making content. For example, I remember there was a time where VTubers were taking photos of themselves and they forgot to turn off their location on social media and they got doxxed where their location was because they didn't go into like their settings on um, Twitter and turn off the little geolocation thing. Little things like that, you know? <laughs> 
that kind of data can be tracked back to where you are. And if you really care about your privacy, those are things that you might want to check before uploading. You know, like I know it's really exciting. You're there and you want to show everyone you're there. But just remember, check all your settings, make sure location is turned off. Make sure like the metadata on your phone is unchecked. Make sure that if you have any license plates, if you see any reflections, you know, censor those like things like that to kind of keep yourself um, from getting doxxed, essentially. Another thing that I would like to emphasize is when you're going to a convention and if it's in like an entirely new location, a day or two before you head off to go to the convention, check the weather. So TwitchCon this year is in San Diego and um, it's a little bit cooler. It's also very humid in San Diego. The humidity there is insane. So some things that I'm packing are, um, I'm packing a long sleeve in case if it gets a little chilly at nighttime. I bought some product for my hair because frizz is not fun to deal with and humidity really likes to frizz my hair. So I have like special products for my hair. I also included some special lotion to help my skin. So that way I'm not getting really dry skin while I'm over there. Things like that you should also take into consideration because if you don't and then you get there and you're like, oh shoot, all this is happening, this sucks. You're gonna spend a lot of money on the fact that you didn't plan ahead. And I'm not saying you need to plan ahead like three weeks in advance and have everything packed in like a suitcase unless if you're that type of person, but at least kind of like look ahead. And another thing to plan ahead is restaurants, okay? What kind of food places are around that convention center? Thankfully, San Diego, like where TwitchCon is located, there are tons of restaurants right outside the convention center. The problem that we had in Las Vegas last year was that <laughs> it was in the Las Vegas convention center, which is not an ideal place to host a large convention like TwitchCon because the, the thing about Vegas is that you have to drive everywhere. Even unless if you're like right on the strip, you have to drive everywhere. And there was a lot of traffic because they closed everything down for that um, race car thing that uh, was it called F1 or something. And it was just awful. And a lot of people spent so much money on Ubers. And that was a huge problem for a lot of people because they didn't realize how Vegas is. So yeah, if you're going to a convention, look at the area, look to see what kind of restaurants are around, look to see how far your hotel is from the convention or if you're doing an Airbnb. Make sure you actually plan designated areas so that way you're not stuck and having to spend unnecessary money. Something about California that a lot of people don't know that I found out recently is that a lot of restaurants, I don't know about San Diego in particular, but in California, there's a lot of restaurants that charge you a sit-down fee. <laughs> a sit-down fee. What that means is just to enter the restaurant, your bill is going to have an additional charge just to sit down. I didn't know that was a thing. That's a thing in California. I don't know about San Diego. I will find out when I go to San Diego and I will tell you. But yes, that is, I found out about that. So these are things that you want to research. You know what I mean? So, the, and the reason why this is so important is because what if you don't have a lot of money? What if like, you know, TwitchCon's already expensive, right? The con, the, the con tickets were, <laughs> were insanely expensive. And Let's say like you only have a certain amount of money out there. You don't want to go a couple of days without eating and getting water and stuff like that, right? So you want to make sure you do plan ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if all of California has that. I, I just know that is a thing. <laughs> that is a thing at some restaurants over there. <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think about. When in doubt, bring Lunchable. <laughs> yeah. And you still have to buy the plane ticket or unless if you're driving, you got to pay for all the gas and then you got to think about parking. Um, unfortunately, California is known to have terrible traffic and stuff. These are just things that like you have to think about, you know, <laughs> conventions are expensive. They really are. Like, I don't think people realize how expensive um, conventions are and, and like you got to pay for the ticket to go to the convention. 
you got to pay for the hotel or Airbnb. You got to pay for either the gas if you're driving plane ticket, if you're flying, or um, Ubers if you're going to be getting taxied around. And here's the thing. When you go inside the convention center, it's not like you can just walk in. You have lines and lines to get into other lines and lines and lines and lines and lines and more lines. It's line con. Yes, we're talking about line con. That's so okay. The reason why I'm bringing this up is, oh, Mari, you're such an impatient buck. It's not that right. Well, it's going to be hot. <laughs> it's going to be hot in San Diego. And so things to probably bring with you our sunscreen maybe like a little sun umbrella or a hat like those are kind of things you have to keep in mind um now if you're going to a convention where it's cold you know like anime boston and stuff like that um you'd want to have like a jacket with you like those are things that you want to keep in mind because if you're waiting in line outside it's gonna suck <laughs> if you're not prepared for the weather and I, I bought so much sunscreen for TwitchCon just in case. And let me see. Another thing that you have to wait in line for is restaurants. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not only is there that sit-down fee, but you're going to be waiting a while to go into a restaurant. So let's say, like, you have um, some friends who want to get dinner, right? And you're all like, oh, let's go get dinner at 5 o'clock. You might not get seated at a restaurant until 7. And reservations at some places, you can kind of do but some places don't take reservations so you know if you're starving and you gotta wait an extra two hours to go to a restaurant these are things to just keep in mind i'm not sitting here to complain being like yeah convention like these are just things that i think a lot of newbies who have never been to a convention don't know about and so they don't prepare themselves and then they're forced to have to do things out of the sake of convenience and end up spending a lot of money. And then they're like, wow, you know, like that was a lot of money and stuff. Yeah, remember to bring snacks. Yes, that is where I was going with this. Yes, pack yourself some snackies. It's a little bit harder if you're flying because, you know, TSA and stuff. So what you can do is that when you land, you can go to like a little supermarket before you head over to the area where you have to be for the convention center and buy some snacks. It'll be a lot cheaper than getting whatever's at the hotel or buying the stuff that's right there by the convention center because they're going to upcharge that a lot. Like you might think, oh, I can just buy some snacks there at the convention. Yeah, you can for like three times the price. <laughs> so again, these are just things that, you know, to keep in mind when you're gonna go to, to conventions. Now, that's all about the prep phase, right? I want to talk about con etiquette. TwitchCon is very unique because some of the typical con etiquette that you would see at an anime convention don't apply because most of the time people are either content creators at TwitchCon or they are a fan of a content creator. So <laughs> you're going to see a lot of people streaming and a lot of people coming up to you while they're live streaming. And something happened, uh, like, and here's the thing, that's okay. As long as you're okay being filmed. Unfortunately, when you go to TwitchCon, you're going to get filmed, even if you don't want to be on camera. I know it sucks, but you're going to get filmed. Um, When it, I had an experience last year at um twitchcon mind you i am a vtuber so privacy is a very big deal some vtubers are okay with face reveals like some of them will take photos of themselves and post it online so you know what they look like behind the avatar the creator of that avatar i don't i i i don't do that i have um a lovely assistant who helps me and who helps uh with the mari yume channel so i don't have any like face reveal photos of myself and so when it comes to like privacy and being filmed, I don't mind if people like have photos of me or like record me if they ask for permission. So if you do end up going to TwitchCon and you find um, my, uh, my assistant, you are welcome to take a photo with her if you ask. 
what happened to me last year was not okay. <laughs> I was getting my badge and um, when you go to pick up your badge at TwitchCon, there's like a really long line sometimes, unless if you're a partner and you just go whoop. But if you're a lowly affiliate or an icky viewer, it takes so long to get your badge. <laughs> so after I got my badge, I was waiting on someone else who was grabbing their badge. This guy um comes up to me and he said to me like, hey, can I ask you like a, a question? Mind you, I the way he had word, like said it made me kind of think, oh, he must be like a Taurus who's lost in Vegas because I get it. I'm very used to Vegas. I know Vegas pretty well. And I was like, um, yeah, sure. Like, what do you need help with? And then he whips out a camera, like three of them, and <laughs> starts interviewing me about racism in Minecraft. Like... What the fuck? <laughs> what? Y yeah, asking me about racism in Minecraft and and just all and I was like I was so uncomfortable. It threw me off completely. And you know what really sucks? My badge was showing the entire time. I don't know who this content creator was, like this Minecrafter. I'm guessing he's one of those prank channels that just randomly like um surprises people to get a reaction out of them. And like I tried to like cover my badge and stuff, but like it, it was kind of too late and everything. And he was just grilling me about these questions about racism. And I'm like, um, I'm uncomfy. I'm, uh, I'm uncomfy. <laughs> this is weird. This, this is weird. And yeah, uh, so <sighs> the reason why I am telling you this story is because if you are a VTuber and you're worried about your privacy, I would just like to say, hey, there's a good chance you're gonna get photos taken of you and you're gonna be on film. So if you don't want people to know who you are, what I do is I flip my badge over. Like I, cause you have to wear your badge at TwitchCon. You can't just hide it, um, security will get you. But what you can do is you can flip it over. And then if security asks to look at your badge, you flip it back and then you can just flip it over while you're wearing it. So that's something that you can kind of do to kind of like make it a little bit harder for people to badge uh, check you essentially to try to, you know, face dox you or something like that. Unfortunately, I know that sounds really silly if like you're a normal like IRL streamer and stuff, but for VTubers, there's some of them really care about their privacy, me being one of them. And this is something that um, I've heard horror stories from other VTubers who were getting face docs and stuff at conventions. Like there are people who are specifically seeking out VTuber badges and they're scanning everyone's badges to find out who that VTuber is, take a photo of them, and then they post it online and be like, haha, look what I found. So that is something to kind of keep in mind. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> it's just one of those things where like, if you are prepared for it, you'll be a little better off compared to being completely blindsided by it. So yeah, those are just, uh, <laughs> content creators are wild, man. Especially the Minecrafter ones, like they're crazy. <laughs> they're crazy. There's one last thing I want to bring up about TwitchCon and then I'll stop yapping about it. And that is alcohol and the D word. Cause I don't, I don't think I can say, I don't think I can say that word on a live stream. So, um, it's not that uncommon, especially for women at conventions to get their drinks spiked with something. It actually happens every year, especially at TwitchCon, even during like exclusive parties. Just because you get invited to a VIP party does not mean you are not vulnerable to getting your drink spiked. So for anyone out there who is old enough to go to these bars, I would just like to say, one, if someone offers to buy you a drink and you say yes, make sure you are with them and you are watching the bartender pour that drink. Do not let that person grab that drink for you. You grab that drink directly from the bartender. Two, if someone does hand you a drink, if someone else touches your drink, you are vulnerable to that drink being spiked. There was a time when I was in San Diego, there was a guy who was going around an exclusive like 
TwitchCon party, he had a ring, okay? I saw him do it. It's very subtle, right? He had a ring. And what he did was he'd go around to people and like he would like gesture his hand. And if he noticed like his hand hover over someone's drink, he'd tap his finger on that ring. So there's a good chance there could have been something on that ring, like a little bit of a powder or something, right? So when you're out at these places, always keep your drink on you. Cover your drink with like a napkin or like your hand if you need to. Um, there are these like strips you can buy that will tell you if your drink is spiked, if you don't feel safe. Um, there's also fingernail polish that you can get that, um, especially for, uh, if you want to be super subtle about it, there's fingernail polish and you can like dip your nail into the drink. And if it changes color, that's how you know the drink has been spiked with something. And don't say, what do you mean for no? Because the stuff that they put in that is not the kind of stuff you think it is. It's meant to make you pass out and like get very sick. It's not fun stuff. I had a friend who had their, um, she had her drink spiked and she had to be hospitalized for two days. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> never let your guard down when it comes to drinks. So that is something to kind of keep in mind when you're going to these parties. And like, I had to bring this up because every single year, every single year at TwitchCon, someone's drink gets spiked. So <laughs> easy solution, just don't drink baka. And that's true, you could, or you could just buy your own alcohol in pregame. Of course, you know, just again, be cautious who you accept drinks from, bring a trusted like friend with you and always have a backup emergency buddy if things go wrong. Something that a lot of girls will do in particular when they go out to clubs and stuff is that they'll have someone where they'll have some kind of code word or code text. They turn on their location to their friends. So if anything happens to them, they can be found. Um, these are things that I personally do with my roommates. We turn on our locations on our phone. So if anything happens to any of us, we can see where they are. And like things like that will help you be safe around the conventions. Now I'm bringing all this up. It's not because I want you to be scared the entire time you're at the convention. I want everyone who's going to TwitchCon to have a fun time, but I want them to also be safe. And not a lot of people talk about how you can be safe at at conventions. So I really just kind of want to talk about this. Um, and like I said, I will vlog my entire time while I'm at TwitchCon. So expect to see some low quality videos the next couple of days because I'll show you my experience as a VTuber at TwitchCon because it is very different than an IRL streamer who goes to TwitchCon. So I hope you look forward to that. <sighs> okay, that is my very long winded yap session about TwitchCon. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha